Right, I went to an auction recently and uh, I bought this gun. Um, I don't know if you can see it all right now. Um, I've had it apart before, that's so why this lever's loose. I just put it back loosely together just to show you guys. So that's what I bought at an auction. I paid probably a little bit too much for it because as I found out there's a few issues. And um, it's a Webley Hawk Mark III. And I know that because uh, that's engraved in the top there. It's got a few issues with it. Um, I'll point them out as I go along. So um, basically we're going to strip it down, fix it up, hopefully get it shooting and then uh, perhaps I might start convincing myself I didn't pay too much for it. But anyway, there it is. It's not a bad gun. The wood is uh, plenty marked. It's not a problem. I don't mind finishing wood. Um, but it's the issues with the actual gun that, uh, that I'll show you. So um, anyway, to take this apart. Now this is the... There was a Hawk Mark 1 and 2. This gun is dated between 1977 and 79, uh, which is when they were made. And after that, it was then called, I think, a Webley Vulcan, which to me looks exactly the same. So, uh, first thing I noticed is there's a little cut out in the wood there, so there was something missing there. I presumed that was the safety, and as I found out, that is. And I think there's a very good reason why the safety has been removed or broke or whatever. Um, so that was the first problem. Um, the other problem is uh, you can see there's a bit of a gap in the end here with a, this bit which the spring holds the spring in. Um, there's a gap there because the pin's elongate which holds it in. Again, I'll show you that when I take it apart. Uh, the other thing is the rifle wouldn't actually break. So I just cannot break it. And under here, um, if you look in the bottom there, you can just see the sort of sprung lock and pin and I managed to get a screwdriver in there and push it in but that is really really hard to push in so I'm gathering that is why well I can't cock it um, whether someone's put the wrong spring in too tight a spring I don't know but um, the gun wouldn't cock anyway so to take this apart we'll pretend that's in because uh, so I just put that back low see right there's two screws in the front here Again, I was struggling to get the other screw back in, so anyway, I'll cross that bridge when I come to putting it back together. So you've got a screw uh, just there, same the other side. Then you've got your trigger guard screws. The front one is a metal screw, and the back one is a wood screw by the the woodwork. So I'll we'll just whip them out. Okay, now that will probably finish up off the gun. I'll give it a good clean up, wipe the wire wall, re oil it, and uh, I'm not really too fussed about getting it to look too fancy as long as that's uh, clean and feels good. So, so, we've got an issue with these pins, holes in the back here, elongating. Now, I've done a bit of research on this gun, there's not much out there, and it said this is a common problem, usually when you put too strong a spring in it. Now I don't know whether the spring has been changed, but to be honest I'd imagine they all done it to some degree. Um, and what we're going to try and do is get something to fit inside there, exact fit, maybe a socket or something, and perhaps beat these bits down that are bulged up a bit. And maybe try and um, perhaps put some packers in behind it, I don't know. Um, the other thing is the the sight, the adjusting screw in there is broken. Uh, I have got an old sight somewhere which I took off a Chinese rifle. I might be able to butcher that for the parts. If not, I'll uh, I'll separate this and um, try and get it out and fix something up to get in there. So uh, we'll take this off. There's uh, just two uh, X head little bolts in here. Now these were one of these was really stiff. Uh, but I did eventually manage to crack it without doing any damage, so that was handy. There's also little washers on these, so I you don't lose them. So that's that. This one. So that's the sight off. And underneath, uh, I actually lost that first time I've done it. This is what keeps that sprung, there's a little spring underneath, so I mind you don't lose that. 
so I'll have a look at that later <coughs> see what I can do with that if I can't fix it then I'll just have to put a little um, a little scoop on it or whatever now this front side that was loose so um, it's an allen key just goes in at an angle there so I'm just going to take that off and I will clean everything up before I put it back together loosen that and slide that off That. No. Let's say we just pretend that bit's in. I just quickly put it loose and back together. Right. So to get this apart, there's a pin there, which I'll just give that. So just a pin there, holding that front on. And then we can actually break the break the bar away. Right. Okay. Another pin here. That's a bit larger than the other one, and that's the actual pin that the barrel lock goes onto. So another pin out of there, and this is the uh, the bit that is so hard to press. It's unbelievable. I just tried putting grease on it as an experiment just to see if it made it any easier, and it didn't. So get the spring out. And um, that you can hardly move this spring, so I'm, I'm just assuming someone's put the wrong spring in there, and that's just too tight for this to push in. So um, I'm gonna have to try a different spring. I'll probably buy a little spring kit and try different ones. Uh, obviously, wants to be fairly tight, but that is so tight that's uh, unbelievable. And that actually prevents you breaking the barrel. So. Once that is out, this lever, which was uh, hooked in there, you can just unhook it and take it out, unless you barrel. Now this uh, this lever on the front there, there's actually not a lot of play in that, so um, I'm not going to bother driving that pin out. I will probably just clean this all up in the ultrasonic cleaner. So there's not much more to do to this bit other than clean it up, really. So uh, I'll just put that there for a minute. Now. Breach seal in there actually looks quite alright. So um, I do believe you can still buy them. And again, if you couldn't, you could probably stack that out with glued together o rings. Right, on the back here, on the top, there's a little grub screw in there, and that actually adjusts the pressure on the trigger spring. So I'm just going to loosen that off. I'm not going to take it right out, and the trigger spring then you can just, uh, actually we'll just take the pin out, it's just a pin, holds the trigger in, the can it looked like it's something broke off the end there, I don't know if that was something to do with the safety or what, but trigger out, spring in the bottom, um, out, now apparently Again, I've done a bit of research, not massive amounts of information. But because of this uh, this movement here, the holes have been elongated. As this moves back, obviously the trigger me mechanism is operating in here. And it bends that trigger spring. And I would imagine, uh, I read something that when you put the safety on, it only worked when the gun was cocked. And you could put it on and the gun wouldn't shoot when you pulled the trigger, but when you then release the safety, the gun would go off by itself. Now, to me, that's more dangerous than, than having not having a safety at all. Now, these welds on the trigger assembly here, they actually look okay. Again, apparently common fault is for those welds to break. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and uh, fix some of this elongation. Um, I'm going to get um, a big clamp to compress this and get the spring and what have you out. Um, as far as the trigger assembly is concerned, I'm probably not going to strip that down much further. I'll just give it a good clean up, give it a, um, a lubrication when I put it back together, and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, this is my uh, spring compressor. It's just a couple of clamp parts you buy on their own. Get your own piece of wood, cut it to length, and. Um, this looks like um, it's going to do the job. So, uh, right, I've got this set up probably now. Um, got 
some packing wood in there just so I don't damage anything. So I'm just going to wind it in. And the pin should just drop out, which it does. And uh, now we'll uh, let some tension off. Right, that was enough. So this clamp, guys, that's really handy. It sort of almost made for taking rifle springs out. But um, that's just a general woodworking tool. Inherited that from my father. So thanks, Dad. So that's your end bit. Not much of a spring guide on that. Um, and that's it, really. The spring again. I wouldn't know the original lengths or anything. I'm not a clue on that. So let's have a look at the piston. Apparently these have got like uh, piston rings as such. And uh, I can see them there now. Actually, so hopefully they'll be serviceable. Okay guys, we are going to have to take the trigger assembly apart because the trigger seems to be catching, so we uh, take these pins out. And pull that out, there's a little spring in there. hope I can remember how that goes back in. the trigger bit out. No, let's try and get this out now. There we go. Okay. First impressions. It's not too bad. It's pretty clean. Hopefully uh, those rings are moving freely so um, I'm hoping I can get away with them. Um, reusing them so anyway that's that so we're basically uh, got it stripped down I'm um, gonna have to do some work here on these bits um, obviously you gotta be careful if there's any protrusions in there you're not gonna get your piston in so uh, once I sorted it if there are any protrusions I'll uh, have to get a little dremel in there or something and um, obviously I'll rub this rub all the rust off wire wool and a bit of oil I'll give it a clean up well I'll give it a clean first and the oxonic cleaner all the parts and then um, we'll see what we're going to do about all these little faults and uh, we'll take it from there. So get the rings on the piston first and uh, these come up nice and clean, still unbroken so uh, I'm going to carefully get that into the second slot. I'm just going to brush it on. So. Obviously get your slot lined up at the bottom here. And on the rear end, on the rear end I'm gonna put some of the mobile NAM grease on. And I'm just gonna get and just paint that on there. That's the rear end of the piston. This wouldn't actually be in the bore, so um, that's why I'm putting grease on it. Push that in. And all the way in. And also, I'm probably going to rub some grease. Probably going to rub some grease on the inside of there as well, just to make sure. No, you don't want this dripping with grease, but you just want. Thin smell over it. Also on the ends, so the spring can turn freely. And feed the spring in. Now I don't think that spring is too powerful to be honest. That looks like a uh, 
pretty much hanging out as much as it should be. So basically, if you can see these holes where the pin goes through to hold the end cap in there, they've elongated um, with a spring bouncing back. And what I've done where the metal was elongated, there was a little ridge, rounded ridge here. So I've ground it all flat that way with my Dremel, uh, Dremel tool thing. And um, we'll get it all back together and I'll just show you what I'm probably uh, I'm probably going to be doing so we'll put some grease on the on the end there get it the right way up and now we need the spring compressor I'll have the, uh, the pin ready to pull it let's get that in the way ok there you go just gotta get it lined up No, that's held firmly, so the pin now will just drop in. Okay, there we have it. As you can see, that pin is really loose. And what I've now done is um, I've actually heated this up and put some solder in. Now, solder is quite soft, so I'll be honest, I'm probably expecting that to last about 10 minutes. So, that's worth a try. Uh, if that falls out and gets squished up, then I'll just have to live with it as it is. Um, I guess if you could fine weld and build that thing up and grind it, the trouble is with welding there's a good chance of distorting this part uh, and these bits are just sort of spot welded so anyway we'll see about that, I mean the, the rifle should work fine so we've got the end cap in, now it's time to put the trigger in and um, first of all uh, this bit, the little sear bit, uh, you've got to put your spring on there um, that's how the spring sits on We'll try that way. And you just want a little screwdriver to line that up. Then we'll get a pin and we'll follow the screwdriver in with it. Just to make sure you catch that spring. Okay. Put the clip on now because these uh, pins have a habit of dropping out. And I'm going to just give this a tiny drop of oil on the on the pins. They should just push on. Now for the trigger, it's pretty straightforward. Put your spring in first. Shouldn't be any tension on on it because you loosen that screw there and get it the right way around. It's a little indent for the spring. Now, when I took this apart, there was this broken pin in there. Now that was actually probably the, the safety lever pin, which is not on her anymore. So what I'm going to do is use the, uh, which was basically a spare pin in the front there for the trigger because that's the correct pin. So, line that up, push it right through. Well, there's a bit of a raised edge on there, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dremel that off. Bear with me. Okay, I just dremeled that little sort of edges off of that. Um, don't know how that came about. So here we go. Let's try again. That's obviously why he had the pin on there. We're knowing, so I say, hey, it could have been a shame. Put the spring in first, but it doesn't matter because it's so loose. It should just pop in. And uh, what I'll do now is put some tension on that so it don't fall out. I'll just uh, I'll adjust that once I've got the gun up and firing. So uh, just to check that mechanism will work, I'll just put it in the top position. Yeah, it flips back up. Okay, good. All right, now for this part. Now, as I mentioned before, the spring which holds the log and latch. Um, 
was so tough you couldn't cock the gun. So I tried to find a new spring today and I haven't found one yet. So I just cut a couple of coils off that and um, just to see if I can get it working for now. Um, so before I do that, I'm just going to put a bit of grease on the pin as well. The right way around. Okay, now you have to push that in slightly to get the to get the pin in for the barrel. Um, so I'm just going to push that in a little bit, tiny bit more. Okay, that's that pin in, and. Uh, now this will be interesting because um, I'll be able to see if I can cock it now, so I forgot to put the cock lever in. Cock lever in, now we can get this pin bag in. Right, now for this pin, which is uh, and pin goes up against right so I snap shut and I still can't open it right gun wouldn't cock so what I've done I cut some more of the spring off uh, then I that ended up I'd cut too much off that would cock but um, the barrel was loose so what I've done, I've got a little tiny uh, couple of spring washers, stuck them on top of the spring and uh, too tight, took one out, bingo, that was it. It's the, the wood, um, basically I gave it a quick sand down, um, give it a treat with linseed oil, uh, the butt stock come up almost and clean. I, I couldn't take that off because I, I think that's glued on so uh, I just left that in place. Well that's uh, how the woodwork ended up looking. Okay, now for the trigger guard. From what I remember, that was the largest bit towards the back. Get the machine screw in first. Don't overdo that one because apparently they have a tendency to strip out, so not too tight on that one. Right, so I've just got to lubricate this up on the joint on the front here. Uh, let's get a little lick low. Sort the sights out, there was a little pin uh, in there. Uh, I drove that over a little tiny um, drill bit. And I went to look for this old Chinese sight I had, which I took off my Chinese rifle and put a little scoop on. And I was going to think of butchering it and taking the wheels off. I managed to get the screw out, um, which had the strip thread. So anyway, I amazingly managed to find up this old sight. Didn't think I'd ever find it. And actually, I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. Um, I, I didn't realise that was actually a, a dovetail mountain. Um, that's quite a quite a nice little sight actually. It's got side to side movement there. This thing is sort of sprung loaded, I guess that's so you if you bash it that doesn't bend. You up and down movement, which is really stiff, but if you take the pressure off the spring that, that turns easily. So um and uh, actually I quite like it. Uh makes the gun look sort of a bit sort of militaryish and um I kept the original base plate and the screws for the original sight, so if one day I come across an old a broken one of these, I can butcher parts off or whatever, but um, I actually quite like it as it is, so um, I'm, I'm glad I found that. So basically, um, that's pretty much it. Um, I can't shoot it right now because it's uh, quite late at night, and um, there's a bit of paint in that off that front side. I'll probably touch that up because uh, it's got like a shiny spot on it, and it might be handy for, for sighting, I don't know. Um, so the, the brake and the barrel. It's, it's, you know, that's okay. Um, 
there's not no movement there. So um, I'll see how it goes. Um, if, if it shoots alright, I'll uh, just leave it as it is and uh, sort the spring out one day if I have to. So that's the rifle. Uh, bought it at an auction with hindsight, and my advice is don't do that. Really, even an old gun not worth much. Try it out first if you can. Just to see if a car can shoot, make sure there's no bits missing. Uh, the missing safety obviously ain't great, but considering the fact that it's safer without a safety than with one, because that was faulty, um, I think that makes sense. So uh, thanks for watching, and um, I'll give you an update when I, when I get to shoot it.